name is Patricia Bennett, and I am a recovering cancer patient. I am 72 years young, and a little over a year ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and that started a whole process of which I began with chemotherapy and I did chemotherapy for approximately three and a half to four months and then at the beginning of the year as a matter of fact January 28 I had surgery mastectomy which the right breast was removed right here at Carl Hushman Memorial Hospital, of which I'm extremely grateful and proud of all the service and the attention and the love that I have received here from the oncology department, and particularly Dr. Yakab, my oncologist, and all the nursing and medical team that work along with him at which the third phase of my treatment, I received radiation in Merida. At that time, I had to travel, get special permission, and facilitated again by Dr. Yakab and uh, the Cancer Society of Belize to receive permission to travel to Merida and to be able to deal with the radiation treatment. I had three, a little over three weeks of radiation treatment. I was referred to the radiologist in Merida, Dr. Petch, and he too provided excellent service at which on a daily basis, I receive radiation for my cancer treatment. That went extremely well and there were no problems, no side effects and I am really grateful for all the service that I have received thus far. I can tell you that as a recovering cancer patient, I feel very proud of my association with the radiology, sorry, the oncology department of KHMH and the treatment that I have received and continue to receive as they have really continued to follow up with my improvement and my ability to recover fully from cancer. Thank you. I'd like to tell everyone that having breast cancer is not a death sentence. Once you realize that something is not right, like if you do your own inspection and you feel that there is a lump, check it out immediately. Immediately go and have it verified or to determine what is the problem by a medical practitioner. In my case, I went to first to my clinic and then I moved on to getting a biopsy and that biopsy was done right here at KHMH and then I was referred to Dr. Yakab, having been determined that I had stage three breast cancer. Well, it's not a shame. It's anything that you should keep secret. I wasn't afraid to tell anyone, but to remain positive and to receive all the support that I can from my family, from my friends, from my church group. And that is most important to remain positive and to have faith in God, number one, and also leaving it up to the professionals who would be able to tell you 
the way that we should go, the procedures that you will be following. And please be assured that the treatment of chemotherapy, sometimes one has side effects and it is difficult, but the team here at KHMH in the persons of Dr. Yacob and his supporting staff in the oncology department keep reminding you of all the things that you should do and the procedures that you should go through. And they are going to help in as far as possible to make the situation as easy for you as you go through the treatment. When it comes to surgery, again, being positive and remaining in the belief that you're going to get well. You're going to get well and you're going to beat this thing called cancer. Thanks very much, Mom. All right. <laughs> There you have it, a testimonial uh, from Patricia Bennett, who is a survivor, a breast cancer survivor, diagnosed with stage three access treatment at the KHMH with Dr. Yacab. A great introduction to our conversation that uh, we're having with both representatives of KHMH and the Social Security Board of Belize. We are joined by Dr. Ramon Yacab, who's the oncologist at KHMH, and Chandra Cancino, who is the General Manager of Cor Corporate Customer Relations at Social Security Board. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Belize. Good morning, yeah. Channel 5. <laughs> this is, I mean, listen, we, we, we are always happy to be able to look at some of the progress that we're making, especially in mm -hmm. healthcare. And when it comes to dealing with cancer, uh, there have been limited options for patients in Belize. And this is going to be a great step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yacab, let's just, let's just paint the picture as to what was happening before uh, the, the creation of the unit. Okay, um, before there were limited cancer services within the hospital. I mean, it, it's a, I have to mention that it was a little bit dispersed. So there were surgeries being performed, diagnoses were being performed, but what we did in, um, since two years ago, we've been making uh, much more cohesion within the services to try and streamline the patient all the way from diagnosis mm -hmm. all the way to palliative care. So in the initial stages, um, the first phase was doing the consultation, seeing if there is a real patient demand for services. During the second year, we noticed that the number of patients coming on a monthly basis just increased. Um, we're actually seeing around 30 to 40 new patients diagnosed each month and around 60 to 70 unique patients every month um, mm. with a different cancer diagnosis. So with that in mind, management at the KHMH was very supportive in saying, you know what, we have to do something for all the patients. We have to improve and increase the services that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And we started um, doing chemotherapy on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, mm -hmm. Initially um, at different areas at the hospital, and with the unit, we mm. have a centralized area where we're doing um, chemotherapy. Now, with that being said, it's not only chemotherapy in the form of treatment that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're accompanying the patient. If the patient's being, if there's a suspicion of a cancer, or the patient is just recently diagnosed with a cancer, we're there with the patient through the journey, meaning we have a patient navigation system mm. where um, we have a wonderful nurse, Nurse Bernard there, mm -hmm. who's actively there with the patient, calling the patient, making sure that the patient is on time with the studies required. Mm -hmm. And after that, we decide treatment. We get everyone involved in the patient management. Yeah. 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 So the relationship with Social Security Board, of course, uh, you stepped in to kind of take what was a service being offered in different wards and different units and creating a oncology unit. Uh, tell us about uh, the choice to get involved here. Okay. Um, well, first of all, it, I just I want to say that Dr. Yacob is certainly one of Belize's unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. um, we've known him for many years uh -huh. at Social Security because right. he's always coming with his ideas and his plans for improving 
um, cancer treatment for, for patients in Belize. Um, but, you know, he's not the doctor you want to be referred to. <laughs> right. But he's been working so hard um, in bringing us to where we are today. Yeah. Um, so it started with a conversation, I think it was about 2017 or maybe 2018, yeah, yeah. Um, when him and, and some of his associates from, from Global Oncology um, start, came with the idea of the, of the oncology unit. Um, of course, it needed some financing, and mm -hmm. so they prepared their plans and submitted to the CEO and the board, and that initial um, funding was approved. First, just for a little explanation on how it works for Social Security, yeah. we have... Um, a certain percentage in our legislation allotted to social development. Mm -hmm. So a small, I think it's 0.01% of, mm -hmm. of your contributions collected from the employment injury branch go towards what we call a social development account. Mm -hmm. So it's not social security spending the people money. It's, it's a legislated mm -hmm. um, um, initiative or a directive that is in the law for us to be able to support Mm -hmm. Causes such as these, mm -hmm. um, we also support like the Kidney Association, the, um, the Palliative Foundation, um, mm -hmm. the, the Gift of Life Foundation, etc. So that is how these monies are being, are we are able to utilize these monies for, for um, initiatives oh. such as these. Yeah. Um, so the board approved it back then and that is where they started the procurement of equipment. Mm -hmm. Now that was in May mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic was actually in, in its full force and that is the time when you know, borders shut down and the, we were accustomed to going to Merida for, for, for um, cancer treatment, etc. So everybody was kind of shut into to Belize. And so it was kind of like hitting the gr ground running and, and trying to serve provide service for these people that were literally, you know, oh. needed the, the, right. the stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where Dr. Yakab kind of picked it up and started the, uh, the unofficial <laughs> <laughs> opening of the unit. Oh. Um, and now fast forward to today, um, it's now gotten to the point where they are, uh, he can explain it a little bit better, but um, where they want to um, now have the availability of medications, mm -hmm. which is the chemotherapy medications, and I guess other medications that go along with the um, <coughs> the treatment of, of chemo, the chemotherapy treatment available for patients. And so Social Security is, is, is contributing to that as kind of a startup. Mm -hmm. And then they will then sell the, the medications at a very reasonable cost so yeah. that persons can have, then they kind of have a, like a revolving yeah. fund um, so that we, they are able to be a little bit more sustainable mm -hmm. um, right. for, to provide so the services. Develop that sole sustainability. Correct, but uh, it's the initial startup, you know, right. that. <coughs> in terms of the, the access to services, uh, because we know that the treatment for, for cancer patients, it could, it could be very costly. Uh, what's that looking like in terms of people who need to access the services? Mm -hmm. When we compare it, for example, um, to traveling abroad or private services, um, it's much more affordable. And I mean, getting, being able to get the medications through um, the hospital, through Social Security, through NHI, mm -hmm. um, makes it much more affordable. The cost mm -hmm. is much more reasonable for the patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can actually target a more, a larger population. Mm -hmm. Because when patients are going abroad for, mm. for treatment, let's say yeah. I, I want, I'm going to Merida for chemotherapy, mm -hmm. you know, I have to pay for the hospital bill, yeah. I have to pay the treatment, I have to pay for somebody to accompany me, that mm -hmm. person That's has right. to stay in a hotel, yeah. they have to pay for working. food, you know, maybe I'm not employed, mm -hmm. um, and you know, mm -hmm. so you see a lot of persons out there seeking funding to quote unquote, go to Merida for get treatment. Yeah. Um, so we are now saying, well, you don't need to go to Merida anymore. You know, you can get the same level of treatment, mm -hmm. the same level of care or even better um, right at Carl Hushna Memorial Hospital, you know, and I think that's yeah. a big relief for, for patients when you're, you Absolutely. get that terrible diagnosis and, and you, need, you need to go up forward mm -hmm. with your treatment. And some of the challenges start from diagnosis you know, being able to access a biopsy to thank be you, able to you. know whether or not uh, what they have is cancer. How far have we come in being able to offer uh, care for cancer patients at all stages, from where the suspicion of cancer exists to, as you spoke of earlier, end of life care? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what we're doing at the hospital, again, if we have a suspicion, mm -hmm. we liaise with the necessary doctors to get the cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, either if it's a breast cancer, we will refer them to an interventional radiologist. 
if the patient has a suspicion of a colon cancer, we refer them to the gastroenterologist mm -hmm. within the system. We generally um, discuss patients' cases to make everything much more closer in terms of reaching a diagnosis. Yeah, right. um, in terms of the pathology um, reading, that's generally done through ministry, through Central Medical Lab, or patients have also preference of, of doing it private if they mm -hmm. have the need. But we generally have a time lapse of around two to three weeks mm -hmm. where we generally get results for pathology results. After that, at the hospital, we generally do all the staging tests that are generally required, either CAT scans, either x-rays or ultrasounds, whatever the need may be. So we're talking about a month or less mm -hmm. to establish a diagnosis and adequately stage and already tell the patient you need to do this in terms of treatment. Yeah. Now, the treatment will be dependent on the type of cancer. If it's surgery, again, we, we generally have a multidisciplinary um, team meeting where we discuss the patient's case along with the different doctors, surgeon, anesthesiologist, internist, and say the best plan for the patient. If it's surgery, if it's chemo, and if it's radiation, well, we generally liaise with a regional yeah. counterpart right. to refer yeah. the patient. Mm -hmm. And for the patients who unfortunately um, have an advanced cancer, who we know mm -hmm. the curative intent is, may not be there, we liaise with um, the Belize Hospice and Palliative Care Foundation Mm -hmm. um, we do palliative care at the hospital on an outpatient basis, but once the patient might need home care, we liaise with the foundation who generally assists with that part. And again, I must mention that that partnership has been done in part through Social Security Board, through yeah. the NHI program, mm -hmm. um, where our patients are having that level of medical care at their homes when needed. Yeah. Now, the, the cost of treatment, surgery is one option. Um, when it comes to chemotherapy, who, who subsidizes the cost for that? Because it can be very expensive. Yeah. Um, the hospital, there is a service fee. Mm -hmm. there, there, is, there is a service fee. In the meantime, most of the medications, well, we don't really have it available. Ministry does assist us in getting the permissions required on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. But most mm -hmm. of the time, it's the patient that has to spend out-of-pocket money to get the medication. Mm -hmm. Now, that's that has two limitations. Yes. The changes in price will vary depending on where it's gotten. Mm -hmm. And right. even the, if, if the medication for any reason can't be found, well, we know that the prices might just increase. Mm -hmm. So that limits the patient's access. One, they have to be going to get the medication. Most of the time, um, it's sourced abroad. Yeah. Now, having the medications within the hospital in a bulk um, getting it through one of the, the programs, for example, through NHI, mm -hmm. will ensure that medications that are being gotten are at an adequate price. So it's both affordable and accessible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that's the next step in the goal, which that's is right. because being able to have a space and, and kind of a designated area where if you have cancer and you're getting treatment or diagnosed or, or any service, that's one step, but access to medication is critical as well. Yes. So let's, let's talk about uh, how SSB has helped to formalize this unit. Is it just a space created and equipment, or is it also um, assisting in some of the supplies that are necessary, like the medication? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's both. Okay. <laughs> um, it, like I said, they, they had, um, we had like a little handing over, because the time when it started or when yeah. it, it was actually became um, operational mm -hmm. um, was in the midst of, of COVID. Mm -hmm. So we had a very short, brief um, handing over ceremony. And the work started immediately for Dr. Yakab. I think he has statistics of since then to now, they, he, they have seen mm -hmm. over 800 um, patients in, in the unit. Um, oh. And so, um, you know, they, they're working with, with what they have there, um, as he said, at this time, most patients have to um, procure their own chemotherapy medications, mm -hmm. um, and then they, they administer it. Mm -hmm. But now, um, the, with the support that we are going to, Social Security is going to provide, um, they will now be able to have, to, to start the procurement process for the medication, so the patients, that's one less thing that the patients yeah. will now have to worry right. about. Right. Yeah. Um, and so the, the board was very um, amenable to to that sort of, of, of support to the community yeah. because you know you can't you can't go you don't you you don't access these services unless you have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have to mm -hmm. it's much 
it's one less thing that you need to worry about. Um, yeah. I think it's the St. Jude's Hospital that always says you should only be worrying about about yeah. living. That's right. true. You know, so right. you know we're trying to support that as as much as we possibly can. So that's yeah. the step that we are at right now. And then I think we're about to sign a memorandum of understanding of how the procurement process, etc., for the medications yeah. will take place. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I think about three weeks ago, the KHMH was declared to be back in emergency mode because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. How has this impacted the the unit? I mean, w no, we continue to. The unit continues to work. Um, the reason is that cancer um, in itself, the patients diagnosed with cancer, are high-risk patients, yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we do have the adequate protocols for them. Mm -hmm. And it, COVID is here. It's been here for over a year now. And we can't limit our, ourselves with mm -hmm. the treatment that other patients yeah. require, right, and cancer right. is among these ones. Um, prognosis is dependent on time. So mm -hmm. we have continued services for cancer patients at the hospital, even throughout the COVID pandemic, even through the emergency, through the emergency mode. Right. Doctor Yakab, you have to you have to explain these numbers. Eight hundred <laughs> patients in one year. It's it's the eight hundred is a little bit over a year. It's going for a year and a half, two years, but um, the numbers are just increasing. We're actually seeing thirty to forty new patients per month. Per month, and um, is it localized? Is, is it from just this region, or is it from all over? It's from all over. Okay. Um, the hospital has become kind of like a hub for anyone who's who has a suspicion or who is recently diagnosed from can with cancer. We have all the community hospitals, all the regional hospitals, referring the patients to the KHMH mm -hmm. for evaluation. So, um, with that in mind, we generally have a clinic open during the course of the week. Our services are Monday to Friday. Do Is you there, still he's see? He's the only oncologist in Belize. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I agree with you. Unsung Hero also works closely <laughs> with palliative care. I mean, you're, you're with patients, you know, till they pass, if, if that's what uh, has to happen. The, the question I have, though, is are we still seeing mostly preventable, treatable cancers? Yes, I mean, the most common ones are breast cancers, which we can detect early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colon cancer, that we can detect early. Um, cervical cancer, and that is preventable. Yeah. That is, I mean, out of all the cancers, the one that we can prevent is cervical cancer. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's the one among the most common ones and the one with the most advanced stages that we're seeing. So that is... What, what percentage would you say of, of the new patients that you're seeing are preventable and treatable cancers? Probably around 50%, mm -hmm. probably to 60%, yeah. And I know that in terms of prostate cancers, men don't like to get their prostate checked. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing like there's an increase in men who are showing up to get their prostate checked? Yeah, the th thing is that we have that culture when it comes to men that, that they, they generally seek medical attention until symptoms right. mm -hmm. hit. That's the reason they're going to go to the ER. That's the reason they're going to go to your primary care physician. Um, they're not really doing screening. Mm -hmm. um, most of the patients that we have with prostate cancer have a stage four prostate cancer. Well. Yeah. So it's prostate, breast, cervical, colon. Colon and lung. And lung cancer. And lung cancer. And we have, we, we, we're seeing all the different types of cancer, but those are predominantly the ones mm -hmm. that we see generally on a daily basis. Breast cancer accounts for roughly 40 to 50% of our consultations. Mm. Well, are people coming in early for late stage diagnosis? Um, I'd say that around a little bit, half to two thirds might be coming in with uh, either an early or a stage three cancer. We have that 25% there, 30% um, that do come with, mm -hmm. a, with, with an advanced or stage 4 cancer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yakab, speak to us about what you envision for the next, for example, three to five years coming mm -hmm. from the unit and, and the services that you will be providing. Okay, for the in three or, I mean, looking out towards the five year point, what, what I'm looking at is one, we're going to be needing a larger space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because. <coughs> This will, the, the cases of cancer will increase by numbers. That's because population is growing. So the numbers will increase. Two, um, we're hoping that medications will be much more 
um, accessible for us to beat the demands. Mm -hmm. uh, three, we have to start talking about radiation. Yes, right. we are. Yes. We are being. We're depending on our regional counterparts, but I think it's time to start thinking yeah. about having radiation access. There's no radiation, radiation in Belize. No, we have to refer all the patients abroad. Mm -hmm. And that limits, because most of the time it also comes with out-of-pocket expense. Mm -hmm. right. But if the patient can't afford it, he won't, he or she won't go. So I think having that service here available. So mm -hmm. in the next five years, I think those are the three things that we have to, to look out to, having mm -hmm. increased services. And what's the relationship with the Dangvega Cancer Center? Well, we do refer patients. We have... Um, we generally refer one-to-one -one case basis. Okay. And I generally refer especially to patients for coming from that geographical area, from the Toledo district, from the Stan Creek district. And I also offer it to patients and it's a patient preference. I generally refer them. Okay. So we have that, we have that relationship. And yeah. if they have any, if they require me to evaluate any patients, they will do so too. And I will gladly see the patients here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the future of this relationship, we know Social Security. Uh, <laughs> no, but usually, you know, I, I, I realize that you develop relationships with yeah. organizations and especially help them to, to move further along with their goals. Well, like I was, I was explaining to, um, to Dr. Yakab, Social Security is limited by, our, our legis by the legislation mm -hmm. in as much as we can can support these organizations because it's only a small percentage mm -hmm. that the law allows us to utilize for yeah. this, these types of, of um, so Dr. Yacob came last year and he came this year again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, as you said, it's, it's a partnership that we have developed and, you know, looking forward if there is any way social security. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the reason the board looked favorably on this type of, of support is because it's going to improve the quality of life of Belizeans. Right. And the Belizeans are the same contributors that contribute to social security. And inadvertently, these are the same persons that will end up you know, becoming ill in, when you get older and, and will need the assistance. So it's really a direct um, benefit mm -hmm. to, to, the, to the Belizean public and to contributors on a whole. Um, so let's see that. Let's see where it goes. It's certainly <laughs> something we would like to see in terms of amendment of legislation for these types of uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, for others as well who are watching, right. they know that uh, the oncology unit is there, that there is a plan for growth and expansion because there is a need um, for increased access to services. So we hope that uh, people who are looking for partnerships will also know that you're there at the oncology unit, ready with the plans. In well, there. We, we get a lot of, because a lot of persons who even though we don't provide, Social Security doesn't provide medical um, expense, um, we don't pay medical bills for mm -hmm. persons that are not injured on the job. We get a lot of requests for assistance, for mm -hmm. financial assistance and support. Mm -hmm. And I would say a large percentage of those are for cancer yeah. patients. And so mm -hmm. we have seen the need over the years yeah. um, for, for the service in Belize. And so that also drove the, um, yeah. the, the reason. So now we, those patients that are asking for support, they can now be referred, um, you know, yeah. locally and get the, the best treatment that they can get here in Belize. All right, Dr. Yacab, of course, we'll give you a final word here. Of course, we know that you would love to work yourself out of a job because that would be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> what would you say to the Belizean public understanding our cancer realities? Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I'd say is we have to detect early. I mean, listen to the NGOs, the, 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 the Belize Cancer Society, the different branches, listen to the information that they have. Um, we have to detect cancer early, especially when it comes to the most common ones. Mm -hmm. And once you're diagnosed with a cancer or if you have a suspicion of cancer, don't be afraid to seek medical attention. That is a taboo in itself. Yeah. We've had patients mm -hmm. that may have had symptoms for over a year and they're afraid of what people may say and they're not going in for medical attention. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Um, and we're here to help, I mean, in whichever way we can. I think all right. Well, thank you both for coming in and telling us all about uh, the partnership and the work that you've been doing. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And with that, we'll take a break. We'll take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be joined by Ms. Kathy Esquivel, who will be sharing about the biography of Sir Manuel Esquivel. Stay with us.